Hello and welcome to a special segment of GameSpot's Play For All. Now, we're not talking about a new game per se, but we're talking about a game that always has something new in it. We're talking about Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Warzone. And I have Joe, Jeff, and Amos join with me to talk all about what's coming up with Call of Duty Modern Warfare. First thing I want to ask is you're in the middle of season four uh, and I want to kind of get a feel for the, the state of Warzone. Like, What's going on? What things are changing? What players can expect in the near future and things like that? We launched uh, season four. I think with each season, we we feel like we're getting better at it, right? Like when we launched Warzone, we didn't know, you know, exactly how it was going to go. And so each season, we do these kind of ro- roadmaps and we build up what's going to be in this season. And I feel like with each season, we're getting better. So we're we're pretty happy with season four. Um, we tried some really unique stuff uh, in this season: uh, Warzone, Rumble. Uh, the Juggernaut Royale mode, uh, and we even did uh, 200 players. Um, so these are all things that we kind of like, we put out there and we look for player feedback, we go play them in the wild, um, and we also look at how popular they are. Um, Warzone Rumble has done really, really well. Um, a lot of people got in there, had a lot of fun, were able to take in and level their guns and, and, and uh, kind of like build out their loadouts for uh, BR, um, for plunder. So that's been it's been really cool to see, and it's been really cool to kind of experiment what we inject into the Warzone mold when we already have Battle Royale and Plunder in there. I guess we kind of look at players as different types, right? You have your hyper competitive, and then you have your player who players who want to explore, who want to respawn quickly, and so we're always trying to like make sure they have a place. We introduced the new contraband contract uh, in season four, which allows you to take a blueprint out of the map and keep it permanently. And so we've seen players engaging with that. We're excited for future seasons to add new content there, more opportunity for players to actually get things in the Warzone environment, take them out permanently, put them in their loadouts, that sort of thing. Season four is interesting to look at um, as a whole um, because it's so it's such a great offering from where we started. Like when we started, we only had like trios and and plunder, um, and now we've got uh, you know solos, duos, trios, quads. We've got plunder in there. Then we usually have a limited time mode, um, like Rumble in there. And we we've added things like the public event system, um, yeah. you know, where the, the the loot shoppers come in and the jailbreak and all these cool things we're adding. So what I like to see is the growth from season to season, how we keep continually adding value to the free to play players. We keep, like Joe said, we're looking at different play styles. And we're trying to add game modes and events that kind of hit everybody. Um, and so it's just awesome to see the growth and to plan out where we're going in the future. That's definitely one of the, the fairly, I guess, new things about Call of Duty is adap- adapting to the live service model in many ways because you know the playlist is going to be very different even from from like week to week. I hop on and there's new modes that I didn't even like heard of or had anticipated. Um, so, how much freedom do you have to pivot when you know modes aren't hitting or? when do you consider to make a mode permanent or not like can you give me some more insight on what goes into making these these wildly different modes i think what we try and do is put out modes and put them in like a limited time fashion to see how the community reacts um so we don't want to just like put out a mode and and force it down the community's throat like you know this is the mode and you're playing it and you're going to like it so we'll put out modes and see the community reacts we could fix things we'll bring it back and it's more about finding what the community likes and giving them a variety and bringing them back um, and, and deciding what stays and what comes back is usually very data driven. So it's a combination of data. We see what, how many players are jumping in, you know, how does it stack up against the current playlist? Um, also like, what does the community think? Um, are there changes to the community suggesting that we think would make the mode play better when we bring it back? So it's a lot about just like putting out modes and then listening to the community as a live service and deciding how many players were in this and what was the feedback and does this fit a play style that doesn't already exist? That's uh, it's definitely an exciting part because you never know what you're going to get rather than, uh, you know, jumping in and simply just doing TDM or realism TDM, which which I tended to do when the game first came out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of variety, uh, but there's also a lot of continual updates. I mean, it's, I guess it's not anything new for a competitive shooter, but a uh, recent patch just came out and you've uh, made some tweaks to the weapons, specifically the growl has been changed. It's been yeah. nerfed, I guess you can say. And uh, I guess that's the one of the highlights of the the latest uh, fixes to the core gameplay. Can you? Where does that come from? Do you listen to player feedback specifically? Where? Uh, what are you looking at when you do core changes to things like that? Because we've constantly seen 
things maybe not being exploited, but we've seen uh, players kind of use things to their advantage in maybe ways you hadn't intended. So how are you getting that feedback and how are you internalizing it? I think, I think it's a mix, right? Like we definitely look at stats. We look at how are the guns performing? Uh, uh, one interesting we do interesting thing we do is we compare your personal KD with your KD with like a weapon and it gives us kind of a delta. And when we say you, I, I mean like on average, everyone, like what is the impact these guns are having? Um, and we use that to help us kind of balance the weapons and see where they're at. So we also look at, you know, there's player sentiment. Uh, there's, uh, you might look at the esports group and see what are they, like they're min-maxing the game, so what are they running? Uh, we might look at, like recently we adjusted the no stock on weapons because a lot of players were running these weapons of like really long barrels with no stock and they look kind of funky. And the goal there was that people were taking the no stock for mobility and hip fire, not ADS accuracy. So the no stock wasn't affecting the gun enough. And that's where we're looking at it from a design standpoint of like, what should this gun be doing given how they're building it? It's not doing what we intended, so let's fix it. So we have kind of like those three avenues of like stats, look at the, what what's popular and then look at what the design was and then kind of like uh, organize all of that. Um, and also going into it with 60 to 70 attachments per gun, um, yeah. we kind of knew that we were going to have to massage some things as we yep. go. Um, but, um, you know, I think it's also, you know, taking what what is perceived to be like the meta gun and, and kind of smoothing that out. So um, more things are, are, are viable. Um, we don't want just the game to be just this one gun or, or um, one, one style of play and, and um, try to just make it a broad, you know, like we were talking about before, adding to, to different play styles and making sure that, um, you know, the game is is, uh, is open for a lot of different um, weapons and metas. Yeah, and we try and be pretty delicate too. Like the growl changes weren't like crazy and some people are like, it's still too good, you know, it's but we nudge it, right? We nudge it and then yeah. we look at kind of like the stat, what did we do, what was the change? Yeah, yeah. We, we definitely don't want the meta to get stale, to be the same for too long. Um, so even if something was like perfectly balanced, um, and at, at some point it'd be like, oh, everyone's playing the same way always. We need to change things up so players approach it from a different angle because it's no fun coming in and always playing with the same exact loadout, the same exact gun after after you know two months or three months. You know, we're life service. We want people playing this game for years, and that won't last if, if we're not adding new guns and changing stats and, and kind of you know, playing with the sandbox elements of the mode to get people to move around differently. Our, our uh, you know, weapons that we release for free each season, we've been pretty consistent with three weapons. We've actually added some melee recently with, so now we have four, and those are free base weapons, tons of progression, everything in there. Uh, but we look at those as shifts of uh, functionality as well. They're not, we try not to make them too derivative. We try and inject new uh, experiences in with those guns as well. Uh, season four, we're in the middle of it. Is there anything that you can share for the future or the near future of Modern Warfare and Warzone beyond season four? Like, what are some of the things that you are looking at? And maybe if you want to give any specific details on season five, I'm, I'm here for that, but uh, I'm not going to pressure you. But uh, maybe folks might want to know what kind of big changes they should expect when new content does roll around. Um, one of the ones we, we we've looked at like we keep trying different weapons in the in the gulag uh, and this is something where like some people have their different preferences right some people really like the kind of pistols some people like the full auto weapons some people like the snipers snipers have been a bit controversial in terms of well, I don't know if controversial is the right way but there's been a lot of outcry of like they want that adjusted um, and so we've we've looked at uh, making sure that we can update that more often um, and not have it be so static uh, so that's something we're going to try rotating like week to week, what the weapons are that are in the, the gulag. I think that'll be a nice quality of life change. It'll keep that experience feeling fresh. Um, and if something is in there and it's not, you know, being received well, we can uh, adjust more quickly. Yeah, for the future, we're definitely looking at things like just said to change the meta. We're definitely looking at um, uh, adding an, uh, a new kill streak or two to see how that does. Um, we're definitely looking at adding more public events. People really seem to like those, so we're so we're seeing like you know how far can we push that? Because uh, the public event you know only happens once every five games, and it's kind of a cool thing, and it's not disruptive. So we're seeing how far we can take that and, and bring engagement and change the meta and make it feel like every every five games or so you have a cool different new experience. Um, and of course, we're going to continue to make game modes like we have, but that's. That's sort of the easy answer, but yeah, uh, 
things to change up the meta um, is really where we're kind of heading. Things to increase that sandbox. We really feel like the sandbox element of the game is really grabbed onto players. You know, all the crazy things you can do with drones and C4 and vehicles and, um, you know, parachutes. And we really want to kind of expand that. Um, sandbox type gameplay as much as we can. Now, as a, as a player of Call of Duty, I think one of the things that at least we've seen some progress on is how to better handle player toxicity because uh, that does affect the experience of a lot of players. And uh, obviously there have been moves, uh, but things can always be better. And there's it's very hard to uh, find the best solutions for it because of how, how deep it goes. But can you speak to sort of the, the the things that you're seeing reflected with new implementations of trying to curb player toxicity? And what are some of the things that you still need to work on uh, in that regard? So we, had, we, we launched the game with um, kind of like this ATVI user, right, for cross play. And one of the things that we ran into was the filter system for names and things like that wasn't up to snuff because we were handling on our side. So that's that's something we dove on pretty quickly to improve. Um, we added the kind of report player options uh, and feedback for players when a report actually was successful. And I think that's been a, it's given players a little bit more power to kind of like help police and help us. Um, and it's, and it's also an ongoing thing. Like it's something that with each uh, title update with each uh, season we're, we're improving um, and we're monitoring. I want to ask about, what your plans are moving forward with Warzone, with Modern Warfare, and all of its success and plans when future Call of Duties do come out? Like, how do you square the fact that you're still trying to support your game and the healthy player base, and the fact that there are new ones in the series coming out alongside that? We still have, we, we know we have people who love Modern Warfare and who are gonna stay with Modern Warfare and, and that, that enjoy Warzone, so we're not gonna stop updating. We're gonna keep pushing uh, and moving forward with that. Um, we're also looking at interesting ways to tie in uh, future iterations with uh, Warzone, but we don't have specifics on that right now. We're, we're working through that. Yeah, I think I think one of the key things that, that we realized when we launched and we've been seeing is that the more tie-ins we have to the premium title, the better it is for everybody. The the players just love, like they love the, the, the cross progression, um, and they love going between multiplayer and Warzone. A lot of our players play both. It's not, it's not really just like, I only play this. They, they love going in. And so I think we're just constantly looking for more ways to, to incorporate um, as much as we can to bring players in as uh, to play both products. We, we really don't want to like say, create this divide. You either play the main title or you play Warzone. We want to like say, we want to encourage players to play everything, right? Um, and get the largest player base we can and bring in new users. Uh, to Warzone and bringing the premium users to Warzone and have, have people going back and forth between the products. That's where we've seen the most success and most engagement. And so we just want to continue that philosophy of like, like not putting up walls, like allowing players to go between the games um, and, and share items. No, I mean, I, you know, Warzone was, what is it, it was specifically named Call of Duty Warzone, not, you know, Modern Warfare Warzone. And, and it, the, the goal is for it to, to, um, to kind of, um, merge and amalgamate you know, in, in, from from um, you know title to title and uh, and feel like one whole universe. Um, so that's the goal is to is to tie the whole universe together through Warzone. Okay, before I let all of you guys go, uh, is there anything else you want to add that we may have not touched on uh, in the previous questions? You know, we we started off making this crazy game with Modern Warfare and, and made it even crazier with Warzone and. Um, everybody that's just worked really hard on this game it's, it's awesome to see how many people have come out and play and uh you know like we've all said during this conversation you know we're constantly listening to people and trying to make it better for everyone um but we're super happy that um people came out to check it out yeah i, I would i would completely agree with that like we're thankful both for everyone who worked so hard on it and and everyone who's come out to play we took a lot of leaps with this game with getting rid of the the season pass and uh, you know, functional items and MTX are out. It, like took, we did cross the play. cross play, and it's been it's been a wild ride, free to play Warzone, uh, and so we're just happy to be happy to be here and, and thankful. I'm really excited and and kind of thankful for our community. Like they're really active on Reddit and Twitter, and they're constantly giving us feedback and helping us make the game better. Um, and and I know it doesn't feel like it because as as sort of like 
public fi- figures of the company, we can't always get into Reddit and comments like, oh, that's a good idea. And, oh, we're doing that. Or like, you know, we can't, we can't get into those like arguments online with people. Um, and we've got to make the game, right? We can't, we can't be distractions, but, but we are, all of us are on, on, you know, Reddit and Discord and, and Twitter. And we're reading the comments every day and we're listening to people listening to feedback. And a lot of the things we do come from, from community sentiment and feedback. Um, so I'm just like really happy that we have that active community who's passionate about it because you can really see their passion and their ideas and their thoughts. And it's just kind of, it's, it's fun to work on something and see it impact so many people and, and see that people want to make it better and have ideas. So that, that's really helps me stay engaged. All right. Joe, Jeff, Amos, thank you so much for joining me this morning to talk about Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Call of Duty Warzone. Uh, thank you all. Thank you all for your time. And uh, thanks for talking shop. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for talking to us. Of course. All right. And all of you folks out there watching, thank you so much for your time as well. Uh, GameSpot has so much more coverage for Play For All. So be sure to check out all of our developer interviews and all of our streams and all of our exclusive gameplay content. And don't forget to uh, donate to our causes that we are also supporting. Links are in the description below. And uh, yes, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.